I mean, chapter 22, verses 12 and 13. And behold, I come quickly, and many reward is with me to give every man according as his works shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of the first and last. Amen. Amen. Good job. You want to have a song request? Uh, when we sing in the Memphis First thing we're going to do is we're going to go over our memory verse, and uh, I wrote it on here so that we don't have to look it up and we can read it together. Okay, Mark 10, 43 through 45. But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Amen. So up here are instructions on how we are supposed to, to behave, how we're, the attitude that we're supposed to have. We're supposed to have the attitude of a minister, which is um, a, a, a minister. Minister. Teach. Teach. Um, yeah, a minister is um, someone who works on behalf of someone else and works to um, serve others and whosoever of you will be the chiefest will be servant of all okay so the servant will be chiefest and the minister will be the great among you and down here is what jesus did okay even the son of man came not to be ministered unto he didn't come here for other people to serve him he came to serve others he came to minister and to give his life. How more, how much more could, could he have served Amen. other than giving his life? He didn't just give five dollars. He didn't just give, you know, um, a house or a car. He gave his life Amen. for the whole world um, to pay everyone's sin debt. Okay? Now what we're going to do, we're going to do a little um, activity, okay? Um, it, the memory passage tells us what we, that we must be servants in order to be great. Okay, do you know any servants who are great? That was our ruler, one servant. Hmm? Oh, yeah, Jesus. Jesus, the servant who's great. Um, uh, how about some people, um, would you say, who would you say is a servant around us that we know? God. God, that, how about people that are, that are around us? Soldiers. Soldiers. Soldiers or servants. Um, how about uh, a police officer? Yeah. Police officers. Yeah. Servant. FBI. FBI, yeah. What would you say, Adam? Ambulance, Shot. yeah, yep, okay. Our pastor. Yep, the pastor, yes. Okay, what the world, what, what makes them great? What makes them servants? Why, what, what, what is it that they do? They defend the country. Yeah, they're defending other people, aren't they? They're serving other people. They're not just worried about their own needs. 
Um, and what the world calls great and what Jesus calls great are not always the same. Sure. That is what the, wor what the words not so with you mean. In our memory passage, not so with you, that's what they mean. God doesn't measure greatness the way that the world does. Amen. Would you rather be great in the world's eyes or would you rather be great, great in God's eyes? God's eyes? God's eyes. To be great in God's eyes, you must learn to be a servant. What do servants do? Serve. They serve. Who do they serve? God. They, they serve others. Okay? All right. Now, I'm, I was supposed to get pictures of jewelry, but I didn't have access last night to pictures of jewelry. So, you guys are going to come up here. I drew a ruby. Okay. Okay. And an emerald. These are jewelry. Sapphire. This is a pearl necklace. A topaz ring. And a diamond ring. Okay? Now, I wrote the values of each one of these, the prices that I found on the internet. Okay? I want you guys to put these in order of greatness. Smallest over here to the largest. You guys help each other put them in order. Okay, so what is the least valuable um, jewel up here? The sapphire. How much is it worth? $180. Okay, what is the most expensive jewel up, jewel up here? $1,489. Yeah, the emerald. That was the most expensive one, wasn't it? Yeah. So that's the most valuable. I thought the diamond ring was. I thought so too, but... I was wrong. Okay. <laughs> I did. Well, it may have been the cuts that I was looking at. Yeah. Um, Maybe right. <laughs> it was hard to. Oh, we thought it may not be right. Because they were all different styles and everything. Okay. Now I've got some people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's a cashier. Here's a doctor. Here's Tom Hanks. You know who Tom Hanks yeah. is? Tom Hanks is in the movie Forrest Gump and oh, in the movie Castaway. He's a Tom, big movie star. Tom Hanks is um, Forrest Gump. Yeah. Here's a missionary. Here's Hannah Montana. <laughs> here's a fireman. And here's President Obama. Now, I want you guys to put these in order of least valuable to the most valuable. Great, least to the greatest. Well, it looks like it's already in order. Is it? No. Now, was that harder to do than the jewelry? Yeah. Well, was, the jewelry was easy because the numbers were on there, weren't they? It was in mm -hmm. value of money. But why is it harder to put the people in order of the most valuable? Look. Mm. Because there are one in things. Right, we can't put a money value on people. No. Um, 
What kind of order would Jesus put these people in? Um, he says those of us who want to be great must be servants and slaves. So who do you think would be at the top of the top of the list in in the list of people there? Who do you think do you, who do you think Jesus would think is the would see as the most valuable? Cashier? Okay. What's a cashier do? He puts money in the cashier's tree. He serves others, doesn't he? Yeah. All right. But President Obama, does he serve others? Yeah, he does. He does serve others. Yeah. Hannah Montana, does she serve others? Mm. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks, does he serve others? No. no. He makes good movies for us to watch. Yeah. But Okay, how about a fireman? Does a fireman yes. save yeah. lives? Yeah. The fireman saves lives. Yeah. How about a missionary that yeah. goes yes. over yes. and tells people about Jesus? Yes. Okay. All right, you guys. Now you're going to the memory verses on the back of these in order. Here's your memory passage on here, okay? So let's go through and read this again together, okay? Start over here. Mark 10, 43 and 45. Take turns, take turns. Okay. Wherever you read that one. Mark 10, 43 and 45. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever, if you will be the, the chiefest, shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Okay, go ahead and sit down. Jesus is the greatest servant of all because he gave his life to look out for our interests. He didn't benefit at all from what he did. It did not do him any good at all. He didn't have to do it for himself. He did it for us. Mm -hmm. He did it. There was no other way for us to have eternal life but through his death and resurrection. And we're all, we all need eternal life, don't we? Amen. Okay. Well, now we're going to list the characteristics. You know what a characteristic is? Character. You know, character things certain things about about your character um, from Philippians 2 verses 1 through 8 that tell us what kind of servant Jesus is okay I've got a mark right here if you guys want to share uh, you want to share Philippians what? right here um, Philippians chapter 2 uh, verses 1 through 8 go through the passage little by little. Okay. Ray Ray, you start reading. You read verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation consolation in, in, Christ. in Christ if any comforting comfort if of love Okay, now Autumn, 
Read verse 2. If you see a characteristic, stop. Characteristic is, you'll, I'll, I'll, I'll point out. Okay, go ahead and just read. Fulfill ye. You, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Okay, those are things that, that Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to have the characteristics of being like-minded. Like-minded. The same love. Um, being of one accord and of one mind. So he wants us to be in one accord and in one, of one mind. We should have the same focus. We should have the same love that that Jesus has for people, we should have that same love. We should have the same love each other. We should have the same love toward other people and others, um, others' um, needs. Okay. Next, Ray, read verse three. Let nothing be done through. Strife. Strife or vainglory. Vainglory. But, but in lowliness. Lowliness of mind. Let each esteem. Esteem of them be better. Better, better than themselves. Okay. Do you see a characteristic in there? Not just themselves. Lowliness. Yeah. It's not loneliness. Loneliness, loneliness of mind. Loneliness. Loneliness. Lonely. If you think of yourself as being lower, okay? Are any of us better than God? No. No. No one on this planet. Tom Hanks, President Obama, Hannah Montana, <clears throat> none of them are higher than God. God is the highest. He is the Almighty. We need to think of ourselves as being lowly. We are lower than God. Lowliness of mind. Um, esteem others better than, than themselves. Um, I should think of myself as being low and think of other people, no, they're not better than God, but I need to put their needs first. I need to think of other people first. Um, you know, be, you know, sacrifice for someone else. You know, if there's only one piece of candy left in the bowl, you know, give it to the next person. Um, you know, if you're getting ready to go in a line at the grocery store. If there's somebody else that's coming up, go ahead and let them go in first. Esteem others better than yourselves. <clears throat> okay. The next verse. One. Is four. Four. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also Okay. So what does that tell you? What is what kind of characteristic would that be? Not just things, but um, the cares of others. If um, if someone has um, if someone has something that they're troubled with, if they are, you know, having a hard time, um, maybe they need help with something, you need to be able to, to also carry that burden and go and care for them and carry the same cares that they have. 
Right, right. Are y'all paying attention? If you see someone that's having trouble, don't just say, well, I'm glad that's not me. No, you need to, you need to pray for that person. You need to help that person if you can. You need to care for that person. Um, as, you know, think of, of um, don't just look at your own things and your own troubles, but look at, at other people and, you know, try to think of what they're going through and what you can do to help them. Okay. Can Who's I share next? a verse, Robin? Huh? Can I share a verse? Yeah. David wrote this in Psalm 142. He says, I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. Okay. I think there's a lot of folks nowadays, Jesus, how Jesus said that because iniquity would abound, the love of many would wax cold. Mm -hmm. And folks don't care about one another's souls. Who's next? Ray. Read number seven. But me himself has not found no redemption. Reputation. Reputation. And dug up him from a servant. Form of a servant. Form mm -hmm. of a servant. And was. Okay. Right. So here in number four, he um, made himself of no reputation. What does it mean if he's if he has if he made himself of no reputation? Do you know what your reputation is? Reputation is what other people think of you. Okay, if you if you're a real nice guy, you're real, um, you know, you help people. You know, people you have a good reputation with others. Um, some people, you know, may have a bad reputation with others. Maybe they get in trouble a lot. Well, he made himself of no reputation. That means that he didn't seek approval from men. Amen. amen. He sought approval from his father. Yes, amen. He wasn't worried about what men said because men are corrupt. Yes. You know, our minds, our bodies were, were corrupt. He made himself of no reputation. He had probably, would say, a bad reputation from of men. Yeah. You know, people thought him to be... You know, a blasphemer. They yeah. they thought that he was. They t said that he was evil. Yeah. Um, he had a bad reputation with men, but with God, he had a good reputation with God. Okay, so we shouldn't worry about what other people think about us, as long as we're doing what God instructs us to do. Amen. Okay, the next verse. Um, whose turn is it? Autumn. Autumn. Number eight. 
Do you see a characteristic in there in that verse anywhere? Hmm? Cross? No. It's not a characteristic. Characteristic is part of your character. Fashion? No. Obedient. Humble. Humble and obedient. He humbled himself. What does it mean to be humble? To look. To think of yourself as as lowly as below below God he he um, you know he was he was humble he didn't walk around saying I'm Jesus I'm the son of God I can do anything I could wipe all of you all out in just the twinkle of an eye I could just speak and wipe you all out he didn't go around acting like that he was humble amen he, um, you know, he wasn't about impressing men and, you know, being prideful about who he was and about the powers that he had, has. Okay. And the uh, next characteristic, he was obedient. Obedient unto death. Now, how many people could be obedient all the way up to their death? Oh, uh, no. It would be... I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, he knew that he was going to die. He knew what was ahead for him. But he was obedient anyway. He did what God had sent him here to do, no matter what, how painful it was. Amen. Okay. So, um, in those pictures up here, who was more Christ-like? The celebrities... The president, or the or the servants, who was who was more um, the servants? They're they're more Christ-like. What Jesus attitudes do do each of the people up here have? What Jesus attitudes? These are Jesus's attitudes. Care for others. Mm -hmm. The missionaries, I bet the missionaries, I bet they get a hard time from people around them. They yeah. don't have um, approval from men. I'm sure they get uh, they get made fun of or they get um, persecuted for what they do. Humble. Um, would you say that uh, maybe a cashier would be humble? People are mean to her and rude to her when she come, when they when they come through the checkout line but she you know rings them up anyway and she smiles she tries to um, you know keep a, a nice pleasant face about her um, who's obedient unto death would any of them be obedient unto death probably not it'd be hard to do that and I had something here come to me when I, I worked in a store mm -hmm. and uh, one of my good friends, you know, in the store with me. And this woman came in and hit her with her purse. Well. The customer hit my friend with her purse. She looked at, they go into the same church together, she looked at her and she said, is that the way a Christian should act? But she didn't <laughs> offer to hit her back or anything. Yeah. Now that showed what she was Yeah. 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 That popped in my mind. Yeah. Pride, you know, she wasn't humble. You know, if, if you're not humble, you're prideful. You're, um, you know, puffed up and arrogant. boastful and arrogant. And a prideful person would have whacked her, mm -hmm. her she back. Her back with, they were some little old uh, figurines of animals that one of the other clerks stuck back for this woman, and Betty didn't know it, and she sold them. And when that woman found it out, she did what? Oh my goodness. Good grief. So you go through a lot where yeah. 
It's an education to work with the public. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to tell you that. Yeah, it is, a, it is a joy, isn't it? <laughs> okay. That's where actions speak loud and word. Amen. Yeah. Okay, now I had forgotten to bring napkins last week, so I stopped and got some. Um, remember we were talking about a, have you ever seen a, we have, I don't think we've ever been to a restaurant where they do this, but maybe we have, but they'll drape a, a napkin over their, over their arm, like when you're watching um, a movie and they might have a bottle of wine that they'll um, <laughs> out there. Well, they work, we're um, using this. For, the, for our lessons as um, the symbol of a servant, okay? Um, we're using it to help us learn the attitude of a servant. Um, last week, we were supposed to have an assignment, but I didn't have napkins, to let others go first. Um, and we're, this week, we're going to do it in a different way. Well, Jesus is our best example of a servant. Our memory passage tells us that Jesus came to serve us. Jesus was a servant because he looked out for the best interest or needs of others. He looked out for my best interests and for your best interests. What needs do we have in common that Jesus looked out for? What needs do we all have that Jesus looked out for? <coughs> what needs did, did, he, um, did we have that he, he came here for? We need the Savior, Amen. didn't we? We were um, sinners on our way to hell. And Jesus came and he looked out for the need that we have for a, for a Savior. Um, we need unconditional love. Amen. You know, it's, it's nice to know that even when people around you may not, you might not feel love, from people around you, but you can always know that Jesus loves you Amen. no matter what. Right. Unconditional love. He doesn't love you because of, you know, things that you've done right. He loves you even when you make some, make mistakes, and you can always have that comfort. So, he met that need. Um, for our assignment this week is to serve by um, looking at uh, putting the needs of others first. Okay. What are some times that you could put the needs of others first? When you guys are at home or when you're playing <clears throat> or when you're out somewhere. Maybe you're out somewhere. Maybe if you went to <coughs> went up to a door to go in somewhere, you could open the door for somebody and let them go in first. Um, how about if Mama goes to the grocery store? You could help Mama carry the groceries in, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what other needs could you, what other ways could you put others' needs first? You think of anything? Mm -hmm. Take in mind about how you act in front of people that are lost. Yeah, yeah. To try to, to try to, yield to the Holy Spirit even though your flesh doesn't want to mm -hmm. and for, for Jesus' name's sake. Mm -hmm. yep. um, if you see um, <coughs> um, Autumn's getting ready to do something that you know she's not supposed to do, she's going to get in trouble, you could put her needs first by going to her and saying, Autumn, you know you're not supposed to do that, even though she might get mad at you for it. But you put her needs first. You say, well, you are not supposed to do that. I don't want you to get in trouble. Or Autumn, the same thing. You see Ray Ray getting ready to do something, and you know he's not supposed to do, stop him and say, Ray, I don't want you to get in trouble. <laughs> Or if you see somebody doing something where they could get hurt. You know, you see Ray Ray going too fast on his bike down the hill. You remind him and say, Ray, you're not supposed to go that fast. You watch out for him because he may forget or he may, be, may just be, you know, not thinking at the time. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to take these napkins home or tomorrow's. 
Ray Ray, yours is blue. Yay. You drape it over your arm. Put the needs of others first, okay? And every time you do that, every time you put someone else's needs first, you can put a check mark on it. Then bring them back next week, and we'll count how many check marks you got, okay? Does that sound good? Don't lose them. Put them someplace where they'll be safe, okay? Put them in your Bible, or just don't forget about them and throw them in the trash. Don't wipe your face off with them. Nail them to the wall. Yeah, you could tape it up on the wall if you wanted to, or on your door. Um, can't I put it in my little fold up and put it in my box? Yeah. Just don't forget to put the check marks on there, okay? Pay attention all week about how many times you put the needs of others first. Others before your own needs. And you'll and you'll and you can tell us about, you know, situations that came up that we're not able to think of right now. Because that'll happen, won't it? Huh? Yes, you can lay your arm down now. Um, let's go through our memory verse again. We're going to use the, the papers up here that we have the verses on, okay? So let's come up here. Hmm? Actually, what? Yeah, don't take them and use them in the restaurant. You can get ketchup all over them. We're going to go through our memory for our students in these papers here. Mark 10, 43 and 45. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came to not be minister. Came not to be. And to give his life a ransom for many. Okay? Check mark on Another check mark on there.
Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Job, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, Jude and Revelation, yes. Many sons had Father Abraham. 
See who can get the most check marks. Okay, I need to do something real bad. book of Isaiah says, My servant shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. The Bible says that his visage was so marred more than any man. Jesus served God. Amen. And I'm glad for that. He served his heavenly Father. And you know, when the children have the, the, the little towels on their arms, it made me think of the scriptures and uh, Psalm 27 and Isaiah chapter 40 in a different light. It says, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The Bible also says in Psalm 40 that those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Brother, uh, when we think about waiting, a lot of us think about sitting down on our hands. But amen, uh, if we wait, if, if we serve the Lord, serve the Lord and be of good courage and He will strengthen thine heart. Serve the Lord, I say, and He will strengthen thine heart. Serve the, the, those that serve the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Those that wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to wait on the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know what? To whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees, the Jewish people, and he spoke something that, that befuddled them. They could not understand. They, they didn't know what he, was, what he was talking about in John chapter 8. He says, yeah, he says uh, uh, continue in my word, those that continue in my word, and ye are my disciples indeed. And he says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they said, wait a minute. We be Abraham's seed, and we were never in bondage to any man. And Jesus said, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. Right. And the servant abideth not in the house forever. 
He says, but the, but the Son, He abides in the house forever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad that the Lord has made us not servants unto sin, but sin shall not have dominion over you. But He has made us servants of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has made us servants of the Lord of hosts. And I tell you, there's no greater thing to serve than to serve the Lord God Amen. Almighty. Amen. Amen. Brother, even when we get to heaven, as we've been studying, even when we get to the millennial reign, we're going to be serving God. Yeah. We're going to serve Him day and night. Hallelujah. We're going to worship Him forever and ever. Glory be to God. You know that song we sang, Showers of Blessing. Uh, that's what the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel that during the millennial reign that there's going to be showers of blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. It's going to be an amazing time to see Jesus. It's going to be amazing, brother, to, uh, to see Jesus sitting on His throne. I'm looking forward to that day. Look with me, if you would, at Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, and we're going to pick up where we left off last week. We're going to look at uh, chapter seven, or, uh, uh, chapter 20 and verse 7. And uh, bless the Lord, we're in the millennial reign. Amen. Isn't it exciting to be in the millennial reign with Jesus? I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to serving the Lord. Amen. I'm looking forward to being in a glorified body with Jesus. Amen. Amen. And, live, and reigning as, with Him as kings and priests with Jesus. Amen. Uh, the whole world's going to see Him. Amen. The whole world is going to see Him. The whole world is going to know who Jesus Amen. is. It's no longer going to be walking by faith because our faith is going to end in sight. Amen. Amen. Even those who live in their mortal bodies are going to see Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Those who are in their mortal bodies who have came through the tribulation are going to see Jesus as Jesus reigns upon his throne. And glory be to God, the Bible told us uh, that there was a resurrection. And the Bible said, Blessed and holy is he that hath a part in the first resurrection, upon which the second death hath no power. They shall be priests, priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. But after that thousand years, the Bible tells us that Satan is going to be loosed for out of his prison. So let's look at Revelation 20 and verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are at the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And let us pray together. Father Almighty, my holy and Savior and God. We praise you, Almighty Father God, Lord, for your word. We praise you, dear Lord, for these promises that are yet to come to pass. But dear Lord God, we speak them and we believe them as if they have already came to pass, Father, because you have declared the very end from the beginning, Father. And Lord God, we praise you for that, for we know that you are holy and you are mighty and that you reign supreme uh, and that, dear Lord God, that you uh, are the winner in the end, Father. And Lord God, we give you all of the praise for that, my Savior. Lord God, help us to commit these, this, these words uh, that you have given us to heart, Father, that, Lord God, they are not just words uh, in a book, but, Father, this is the word uh, of God Almighty. Almighty, uh, that, Lord God, that we might live uh, uh, thereby, Father God. Lord, that we may bring glory to your name uh, thereby. In Jesus' name we pray and amen. amen. And the word tells us here that the thousand years are expired and Satan uh, 
is loosed uh, out of his prison. Uh, Satan goes and he deceives uh, the nations which are in the four quarters uh, of the earth. The, the Bible says that the serpent uh, was more subtle than any beast of the field. Uh, uh, brother, he is a deceiver. Uh, uh, what does that word deceive mean? Uh, uh, brother, it means something that where you are led astray by error. Uh, uh, that you're unable to see uh, the truth. Uh, there are those today in this world uh, who have been blinded uh, from the light uh, of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ by the God uh, of this world is what the Bible says. Uh, he has blinded the minds of those uh, that believe not. Uh, and brother, he will go forth after he is loosed from his prison uh, and he will deceive the nations again. Uh, uh, brother, I want you to know uh, that us even today that sit here, uh, that our hearts uh, are deceitful uh, above all things. What does that word deceitful mean? Uh, it means that your heart uh, is full of deception. Uh, your very heart uh, will deceive you. Amen. Uh, that is why we need the Word of God. Uh, the Bible says that the Word of God is quick uh, and it's powerful. Uh, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, the, even to, the dividing to this asunder uh, uh, of soul and spirit. And it is a discerner uh, of the thoughts uh, and the intents uh, of the heart. Amen. And God's Word uh, will show you what's in your heart. Amen. The Bible said in Jeremiah 17 and 9 that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. He said, who can know it? That's the Word of God Almighty. Your heart is deceitful, brother. And we need the Word of God. He will go and deceive the nations. You say, how could He deceive the nations? How could Satan deceive the nations when Jesus is sitting on His throne? How is it very possible? He's sitting on His throne right there ruling the nations, uh, judging the nations afar off. How is it possible? Well, brother, first of all, I want you to put this in context. If you're saved today, you will not be able to be deceived because you'll be in a glorified body reigning Amen. with Christ. Amen. We need to put it in context. The Bible says to study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed, Amen. rightly dividing the word of truth. And glory be to God, if you're saved here today, you'll be reigning with Jesus Christ in the millennium. But there will be those during the millennium who are still in their mortal body. And the Bible says that Satan will go and he will deceive those nations. Even though Jesus is on his throne and Jesus is reigning supreme. He'll deceive them. The Bible says all throughout the Gospels how that Jesus performed miracles and they wouldn't believe. How that Jesus caused the dead to rise. Amen. And brother, He caused the blind to see and the lame to walk. Yes, Yet they would not believe on Him. Now, brother, the heart is deceitful. It is desperately wicked. Brother, I want you to know today that those who during the millennial reign, there will not be any sin. There will not be any sin until Satan is loosed. There will be generations upon generations of people who live during the millennial reign who have never seen sin. They've never seen what it's like to be tempted. They will never have experienced sin. And temptation because Christ will be reigning in righteousness. Hallelujah. As the Bible said there in Isaiah chapter 11, He won't judge after the seeing of His eyes. He won't reprove after the hearing of His ears. But the Bible says that He will judge in righteousness and He'll smite the earth with a rod. He's going to rule with a rod of iron. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There will not be sin. Amen. Jesus will make it right when He is reigning upon this earth. And glory be to God, these folks will not know what sin is like. Let me ask you, can you remember how many times you have been sick in your lifetime? How many times you've had the cold? Or how many times you've had a flu? Or how many times you've been to the doctor? Or how many times you've been to the, to the hospital? You couldn't count. It's innumerable. There's many times that you've been sick time after time after time and we could complain and we groan and we mumble uh, because uh, we've gotten sick. But I want you to know uh, if you had not gotten sick for those times, uh, brother, one little disease, uh, one little virus, uh, one little flu come along uh, and you had not built up an immunity to it, you would die. You 
would die. God has given you the ability to build up an immunity to those diseases and those sicknesses. And brother, the sin is the same way. Glory be to God. God is strengthening you and He is refining you and He is strengthening you today to be prepared for temptation when it comes. When temptation comes, He has strengthened you through the temptations you already went through. You see, these people in the millennial reign, they won't know what it's like to experience sin. They won't know what it's like to experience temptation. Oh, glory be to God. Uh, brother, if you look with me in the book of James, uh, the Bible tells us uh, in the book of James chapter 1, he says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing, lacking nothing. Amen. Glory be to God. He said, count it joy. Now the Bible goes on there in James chapter 1 and verse 12. He says, glory be to God. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life. Aren't you glad today? Are you glad for the temptations and the trials that you go through. Yes, Amen. The trials and the temptations which you're going through, they strengthen you. Amen. Amen. Brother, what the devil doesn't kill me with, hallelujah, it makes me stronger to fight him more tomorrow. Amen. He's not worried, brother, about you dying and going out of here. He's worried about you staying. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory Amen. be to God. He's concerned yes. about you going through this world and letting your life shine before men. Right. Hallelujah. Glory yes. be. You don't have to worry about dying as a Christian. Amen. Amen. We go through trials. We go through temptations. Brother, we're persecuted for Jesus' namesake. We're cast down, but we're not forsaken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Always bearing about in our body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. We are led as sheep to the slaughter. Amen. But glory be to God. He said you're more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Amen, brother. It's something to be excited about. He said, rejoice. Count it all joy when you fall into temptation. Amen. When you go through temptation. But brother, blessed is the man that endures temptation. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1 and 6, For a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold, which perishes. He says the trial of your faith is more precious than gold. That's what it says. So you have God allowing you to be tested and tried is more precious than gold which perishes. The Bible says, though it be tried with fire, it might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The folks during the millennial reign will not have such a luxury. Satan will be loosed out of his prison. And he'll go and he'll deceive the nations. They have, they'll have no immunity to temptation. They'll, they'll have seen Christ. They won't be living by faith. You live by faith now. Amen. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. So glory be to God. The, today we live by faith but during the millennial reign folks won't be living by faith they'll be living by sight and they'll be the weaker ones praise God for your trial praise God for your temptation when you're tried when someone makes fun of you and laughs at you because you love Jesus rejoice Amen. when someone when someone uh, is trying to tempt you into sin and brother they're trying to get you to fight they're trying to get you to lash back out of anger and out of the flesh. Rejoice and say, hallelujah. Glorious. Jesus, hallelujah, has given yes, me Lord. the strength to withstand yes, the enemy. Yes. Hallelujah. That's being bold as a lion. Yes, it's not being bold as a lion to strike back. Yes, it's being bold as a lion, amen, to stand firm on Jesus hallelujah. and say, Father, forgive them. Amen. They know not what they do. That's my Jesus, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Enduring temptation. The Bible says that Gog and Magog 
are going to come against Christ and his, the camp of his saints. Brother, there won't even be a battle. It'll simply be that fire comes down out of heaven and devours them. And the Bible says that the devil that deceived them will be cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are. Brother, I beg to differ with folks who say that hell is eternity because it's not. It's the lake of fire and brimstone. Hell is a temporal holding place until the lake of fire and brimstone according to the scriptures. The Bible says that the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. You remember the demons that possess the man, the legion of demons that possess the man in Mark chapter 5, but he came and he fell before Jesus and he says, have you come to torment us before our time? What has thou to do with us, thou son of the most high God? Have you come to torment us? Tormenting, brother, is grievous, grievous agony and grievous pain day and night of the mind and of the body. That's what torment is. Constantly. The Bible said here that he would be constantly grievous pain day and night forever and ever. That's what's going to come upon the enemy. Brother, I'm looking forward to the day that he's cast into the lake of fire. I'm looking forward to the day, amen, that there will be no more temptation. There will be no one who is deceived. This was prophesied in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And this was prophesied in the Old Testament about Gog and Magog. That God has set His face against Gog. And that, uh, and that He uh, uh, was going to bring judgment against them. Brother, I'm looking forward to the day. This is the end. This is the last battle. This is the last battle. Right here. There's no other battles that come after this. Brother, this is on the very edge of eternity, right here. The Bible goes on and it tells us, And I saw, in verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I want to call your attention to verse 12. The Bible says that he saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books, plural, were opened. Here we see multiple books opened. You say, Brother Troy, what are these books what are these books that he's talking about? I see the book of life. And I believe the book of life is that those who are written in the book of life, as we read, are those who live forever with the Lord. But we see other books that are open. There's many books referenced throughout the Bible. The Bible, the Bible says in Psalms 56 and verse 8 that the God, he says, put thou my te tears into thy bottle. He says, Thou tellest, thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not written in thy book? Brother, did you know the most precious thing to God is when someone is saved? And that is the closest that you can be to being saved is when you are broken. Amen. When you have a broken spirit and a contrite heart, O oh Lord, thou wilt not despise. God resists the proud, Amen. but he gives grace to the humble. Amen. Amen. So, brother, you know how precious it is to God when you cry? And a lot of men will say, you know what? I'm not going to cry like a sissy. 
Lord. You know what? I seen my daddy cry one yes, time. Lord. I remember when my grandpa passed away. I was just probably about 11 or 12 years old. Not my grandpa passed away, my dad's dad. And he led him to the Lord. And you know what? I remember seeing my daddy cry. And I remember that to this day. And you know, a lot of people would think, well, a, a man shouldn't cry. But I tell you, it's precious to God. Amen. It's precious yes. to God when a man cries yes. out to God. And he says, God, save Amen. my daddy. Save my father. Glory, I tell you. God hears it and it's a, most precious to him. Then he writes it in a book. He writes it in a book. He writes it down in a book. The Bible says also, in Psalm 139, Thine eyes did see my substance, uh, yet being unperfect, uh, and in thy book all my members were written, which is in continuance were fashioned, uh, when there was yet none of them. Uh, every part of your body is written in a book. Everything about you is written in a book. There are scrolls. Now, we think of a book as being a book, you know, that's uh, been bound at the present. And there's scrolls in heaven that have everything about every time you've cried, every time your heart's been broken, and every part of your body. Amen. You got an ailment? You got, a, you got something that's giving you problems? God's got it written in a book. God knows. You know, that's how he knows his sheep. Amen. Is the things, their infirmities. That's how he knows. That's how a shepherd can tell the sheep, brother. This one's got a ding on their ear. That one's got a little bit of collar out of place. That one's got a bad eye. Or that one's got a, a funny lip. And God can tell you by the infirmities that you have. Amen. And God has all of those things written about you in a book. He knows them. Amen. Aren't you excited? The Bible says in Malachi 3 and 16, that they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought on his name. Brother, when you are fellowshipping about Jesus, when you're thinking about Jesus, when you're glorifying and worshiping God, you know what? There's a recording angel, brother. And he's writing in that book those things that you've done for the Lord's name and the Lord's glory. Hallelujah! But there's also another book a lot of folks don't think about. There's another book. It's a book of sin. Look with me, if you would, at Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, a book of iniquities. The psalmist said, Lord, if thou wouldst mark iniquities, who shall stand? I got news for you. It's being written down. The Bible says, even at the judgment seat of Christ, that every man's work shall be declared of what sort it is. Amen. Whether it be good or whether it is bad, it's going to be declared. Everything that we do is written in a book. Isaiah chapter 30, the Bible tells us at verse 8, Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come. What's that time to come? Judgment day at the great white throne. Isaiah 30 and 8, he says, Go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come, Forever and ever. Amen. This, the Bible goes on and it says here that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Brother, do you know what? The most important doctrine in the Bible is for each one of us. The most important doctrine in the Bible for each individual one of us. It is that doctrine that is written in God's Word that breaks your heart the most. That's the most important part of doctrine. Brother, whether it's the great white throne... Whether it's judgment upon sin, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. A lot of people don't want to hear that. Amen. But that's the most important doctrine.
The one that people don't like the most is the one that's most important for you. Amen. That's the one that's most important. Because here the Bible says that these folks whose uh, sins are written in this book, they can't stand the preaching. They can't stand the doctrine. The Bible says uh, that they can't stand uh, the, 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 the sharpness of the sword of the Lord. They can't stand it. They said, prophesy unto us smooth things. Give us deceits. Tell us how good we are. I got news for you. Your heart's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The Bible says here that it's written in a book. Rebellious children. Lying children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Brother, books will be opened at the great white throne. And every sin, every, the Bible said that Jesus told us Amen. He said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. He says, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. He says that what you speak in secret shall be proclaimed openly. Amen. And that that you hear in the closets, it will be preached upon the housetops. Amen. I want you to know, brother, that God is going to show everyone's sin before the whole congregation. Whether it's at the great white throne judgment or whether it's at the judgment seat of Christ, it's going to be shown because it's all written down. And God is a God who delights in judgment. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. You know why? Because He's a just and He's a holy God. And whatever He does is right. Amen. Hallelujah. It's right, whatever He gives us. It's perfect and it's holy. Amen. Aren't you glad? Brother, who are some that are going to be at this great white throne judgment? Who are some that we know of in the Bible that are going to be at this great white throne judgment? Well, the Bible tells, told me in Luke chapter 19 that the Bible says that there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and he fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar which was laid at his gate full of sores. And moreover, the dogs came and they licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. And he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the Bible says that the rich man also died. And in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torments and seeing Lazarus afar off. Glory be to God. I believe that this rich man, he'll be there at the great white throne judgment. He has been in torment in torment in hell for 3,000 years or more. And now he goes to judgment to be cast to the lake of fire for eternity, forever and ever, where the devil, the beast, and the false prophet are to be grievously tormented in mind and body. Brother, he was grievously tormented as he was in hell because he said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he might dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. Amen. For I'm tormented in this flame. Brother, he, he could feel Amen. pain Amen. in his body. Yeah. In hell. Bless the Lord. Who else are going to be there? I believe that many false Christians will be there. False Christians. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measurement ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. I believe there's many Christians, so-called Christians, who go around condemning one another but will not look at their own, their own weaknesses and their own infirmities. They'll look at the drunkard down the street or the dope addict that lives under the bridge and they'll say, boy, I'm glad I'm not like that one is. And brother, they don't care much at all for that man's soul, but they care about what they can get. And what God's going to do for them rather than, Lord, what will you have me to do? Yes. Lord, have me to go. And I tell them, I tell you, when Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up, he said, woe is me, for I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. He said, my mouth is filthy, is what Isaiah the prophet said. He says, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Oh, glory be to God. There will be those, a brother that judged others but refused to look on their own wickedness and re realize that they needed a Savior and that they needed to show the world compassion and the love 
of Jesus. The Bible says when Jesus saw the multitudes that they fainted as sheep without a shepherd, He was moved with compassion. Oh brother, if there's anything this world needs today, Amen. it's for sinners to have compassion Amen. on the lost. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Don't go and invite those. Amen. Uh, that can recompense you again. Uh, but go uh, and call the halt uh, and the blind uh, and the lame uh, and have them come. Uh, pray, brother, they can't pay you back again. Uh, but God said, I'll repay you uh, in the kingdom of my Father. Amen. Hallelujah. There's another one that'll be there. The Pharisee. There were two that came to the temple to pray. The one a publican, a sinner, and the other a Pharisee. And the one stood and he prayed thus with himself, Father, I thank you that I'm not as other men are. Extortioners or unjust or adulterers or, uh, uh, or even as this publican. I give tithes of all that I possess. I fast twice a week. The Bible said that the publican wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven. But he smote on his breast. And he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Oh, brother, glory be to God. Jesus said, I tell you that this one shall go to the house justified rather than the other for every one. He didn't say some. He said, every one that exalts himself shall be abased. And every one that abases himself shall be exalted. Hallelujah. God will lift you up, brother, if you humble yourself before him. Hallelujah. Those are some of the ones who will be there at that great white throne judgment. There will be those who seemingly were religious. Those who seemingly, uh, uh, everybody, boy, I thought, I thought he was a Christian. Boy, he sure found fault with a lot of other people. I mean, he could point them out like the best of them. And brother, here he stands at the great white throne judgment with the book open, with every deed that he has done. Oh, brother. It's going to be a time for those. You see, the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 5 and verse 27, the Bible says that thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. There was judgment that came against Belshazzar, king of Persia, the son of Nebuchadnezzar. And the Bible says that... Uh, that as he was, that he had taken uh, all of these things of the Lord, and the, the the chalices and the and all of the things of the house of the temple of God, and they poured wine in it, and they were drinking, uh, and they were partying uh, with these things of the Lord. Uh, and the Bible said uh, that out of the wall came a hand, uh, and the hand began writing on the side of the wall, uh, and it proclaimed a judgment uh, unto this man. I tell you, it's the same hand uh, that wrote uh, in the two tablets of stone uh, at Mount. Sinai. It's the same hand in John chapter 8 when the woman who was caught in the act of adultery that Jesus stooped and he wrote in his finger in the sand. I tell you, brother, that it was the same hand that wrote judgment against Belshazzar. And he says, you've been weighed in the balances and you're found lacking. You know what those balances are? You have on one side the righteousness of God Almighty. The holiness and sovereignty of God Almighty on one side. And the other side, you have your goodness. The good thing, not just the bad things, the good things. The tree was the knowledge of good and evil. You see, we are all as an unclean thing. Amen. And our righteousnesses are as filthy rag. Not, brother, not just the sin. Our goodness is filthy rags. Isaiah 64 and 6. Our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. So you have on one side the righteousness of God Almighty. And on the other side, you have man's goodness and man's sin. Brother, which one do you think is going to win in the way of the balance? <laughs> Amen. The Bible said that God made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that the righteousness of God might be in us. Hallelujah. Brother, that is what God has given this world. He hasn't given you your goodness to be saved with. He hasn't given you the preacher's goodness to be saved with. He's given you the righteousness of Jesus to, be, to cover and take away your sin. That's what He's given. 
That's what's going to be weighed in the balances. That's the judgment that's going to take place at the great white throne. Are you as good as God? Is what he's going to say. He's going to have the books open, and he's going to have the other book open, which is the book of life. Paul said in Romans chapter 10, It is my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. That they go about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Paul said, who was a Hebrew of the Hebrews, who was a Pharisee, circumcised of the eighth day of the tribe of Benjamin, did everything according to the law that he possibly could. He says, if anybody's a Hebrew, he said, I am more. I'm more. If any man was going to trust in the flesh, he said, I'm more. If you are trusting your own righteousness this morning, Paul says, I could do it more. I live closer to the law than any of you did. That's what the Apostle Paul said. Paul says, I don't want to be found in him having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness of God, which is by faith. It's that simple. It's simple, childlike faith that saves us, that saves the world. I'm so glad, amen, amen that God is a just God. Amen. He's a holy God. Amen. It's good to be saved today. Is your name written down? Do you know Bless the Lord. that your Thank name you, is Glory written down? Hallelujah. Do you know what a servant Moses was? Bless the Lord. Moses said, Lord, if you won't forgive my brothers and my sisters. He said, take my name out of your book. That's how much he loved them. Blot my name out. The God's a just Amen. and he's a holy God. Amen. And God responded and he said, the one that sins, his name, his name I'll blot out of the book. Amen. Is your name written down in glory? What a privilege yes. it is to know. To know that you know your heart's right with God. Amen. Brother, I'm so glad that Jesus wrote my name down one day. Let's, see more. Let's all pray together. Father, Lord, we praise you, Father God, Lord, for your salvation. Lord, for saving us. Lord God, we just pray for each and every one, dear Lord, that's here this morning. The family of each and every one, Father. Lord, I pray that you would take this message that you have poured out to us, Father. And send it forth, Father God, Lord, that every soul that hears would believe upon Jesus as their Savior. Father God, Lord, that you may bring forth fruit unto righteousness, Father God, Lord, for your name's sake. Father God, Lord, not for us, but for your glory, Father. Lord, we thank you for all that you've proclaimed. We thank you for the soon coming King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you, dear Lord God. For that heavenly city, New Jerusalem, which will come down as a bride adorned for her husband. Father, thank you for that. We praise you, Father on high, for all that you've given us and all that you're going to do and for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. amen. Does anybody have a song that you've got? Uh, page 146 in the red book. We'll be fine by. Amen. Jesus, being a child of the King. Amen. Anybody have anything else you want to say? Uh, Bless you, Brother Paul. Could you leave us in a happy birthday? Oh, well, praise the Lord. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> bless your heart, sister. Amen. God's been good to me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Aren't you glad for our sister, Aunt Jean? Amen. Amen. I love hearing her sing, don't you? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Wasn't that a wonderful lesson that Robin taught this okay. morning? Yeah. Amen. I just get more and more from that. That is just such a blessing. Yeah, it was. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, 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 Am
Anybody else have something to say? All right, let's praise the Lord. Brother Jim, would you lead us? Praise, praise the Lord, for his mercy and death forever. Praise the Lord, for his mercy and death forever.